Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to do a really fun new pattern. This is called Carousel and I can't wait to show you what it looks like. So let's go over to the studio and get started sewing. The Carousel quilt is going to be made with a lot of different widths of strips. Now mine are already cut. If you're going to cut your own, here are the sizes you're going to need. These light ones and these triangles, those we're gonna use later. That's gonna be some sashing and corners. These strips here, we have one inch. I have 20 of them. One and a half inch, I have 20 of those. And then two inches, I have 10. So my strips are already cut. These are the full width of the fabric. So you go get yours cut and then I'll show you how to stitch them up. We're going to make some strip units with all of these strips. We're not going to put them in any particular order, but we're going to sew them side by side till they are about eight inches wide. So it doesn't really matter which ones you pick up. You just want to get a nice variety of colors and a nice variety of widths. I'm just going to put these on my lap and I'm going to pick one of the wider ones to start with. Don't pick the really skinny one. And now I'm gonna pick a different color and I'm just gonna use a quarter inch seam and I'm going to stitch all the way down and then, then we'll finger press it open. So I'm gonna start at the top and I'm going to finger press this open because it makes it really a lot easier to iron later. So I'm kind of opening it with my hands and then pulling my fingernail or even the pad of your finger right down that seam and it just opens it up and keeps it really nice. Now I'm gonna grab another strip. So you can, all you wanna do is grab a different color and add this strip and we're going to keep adding strips of different widths till we have at least eight inches wide. I have all of the seam allowances all facing the same way. All of them are going to the right here. I don't have a problem when I stitch this together with any bowing. Some people find that when they stitch a lot of strips together, it tends to bow. So what we recommend then, if you see that happening, is to sew one strip down that way, then turn it around and stitch from the other direction and alternate directions. So you can do that, but if you're careful and don't stretch either the strip or the unit you've already got started, it probably won't bow. The other thing you ought to do is use a pretty small stitch length. So I've got 10 to 12 stitches per inch there because we're going to be cutting this and you don't want any of those seam allowances to come apart. Now let's measure, make sure we've got eight inches. We're just under eight and that's okay because we're going to be cutting this into triangles that measure seven and a half inches. So technically if you have seven and a half, you're okay, but try to head for about eight. So that's the first unit. We've got some wide and some narrow. It doesn't matter what order you put them in, but we're gonna make five of these strip units and we're gonna use different fabrics every time and we're gonna mix up the order. I have five strip units here and we wanna iron these really flat. Now this has not been ironed yet, but because we finger pressed it, it's pretty, pretty straight. So I am going to flatten it out with my hands and I'm gonna smooth it out like this. And I'm gonna put my metal ruler down here to make sure I've got it pretty straight. Then I'm gonna start ironing. And sometimes the ends don't get stretched out quite as much as they need to. So the end, you've gotta stretch out a little. 
But we're not going to cut all the way to the end, so it's not critical if that's not perfect. Once you get it nice and flat, go ahead and steam it. And then press the other four. Here's all five strip units, and you can see how different they look. They're themed, so these are all batiks from Robert Kaufman's Cornucopia line. They do a Cornucopia line every year, and we love them every year, but you get a lot of variation here because some of the units, there's four little ones all together, then some bigger ones, and then this one up here, I've got quite a bit of bigger ones, and it really doesn't matter what order you put them in. And I used up almost all of my strips. This is all I've got left, and I'll probably sew these together at the end and show you how to do a fun pieced border. But now we're ready to cut these into some triangle wedges. I'm using a 45 degree ruler, so it's 45 degrees here, and the tip is cut off, and that makes it easy to stitch these together. And I'm gonna put the seven and a half inch line on the bottom of my strip unit here. Then I'm gonna cut off all the excess. So for my first cut, I can use this template, hold it down, cut that off, cut that off, but for this cut right here, I'm gonna hold that in place, grab another ruler. You only have to do this at the beginning. And I'm gonna set this right up next to it, move that away, and now I can cut along that line. So that's the shape we're going to be using. Now I'm gonna take the ruler, turn it around, and usually you can use that same line. We're gonna put the seven and a half inch line on the edge here. Once in a while, you have to make a fresh cut and recut there, but this looks like it's pretty straight. So I'm just going to cut here and then cut off the tip. Keep flipping for the whole strip. Here are all the triangles that we got from cutting all of our strips. These are actually from the same strip, but they look completely different once you get them all cut up. So we need to pick eight of these triangles and we're going to make a circular octagonal shape. So I'm gonna pick four from the bottom because these have the seam allowances all facing down. And then I'm going to pick four from the top. It doesn't matter which ones you pick and we're gonna take them over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to stitch them up. I'm gonna take these four that all have the seam allowances going down and I'm going to put these around like that and I'm gonna alternate them with these that have the seam allowances going the other way. So I am just simply going to lay them out and then if I have too much of one color in one spot, I might do a little trading, but I try not to get too picky. Now, in my color combination, the prominent fabric that's really poking out is this orange. And it seems to be fairly well balanced. So the only other thing I'm gonna check is, do I have two of the same fabrics right next to each other on the outside? And I don't. So this is ready to sew. So we're gonna take two of the pieces and we're gonna stitch them right along here. Now, because we cut these after they were stitched, they're exactly the same size. I am going to use a seam allowance that is slightly larger than a quarter inch, just a touch. And that's because when I come to the point here in the center, it's a little easier to match the point if your seam is a little bit bigger. We're going to press this seam allowance to one side, but don't stretch it, just kind of pat it down and maybe finger press right in the center there. So if I flip this over, you'll see that all of these seam allowances are going up and all of those are going down. Now the, the pieces don't meet here, there's no matching, but it does reduce the bulk a little bit if they're going opposite directions. It's not critical, but it helps a little bit. So we're just gonna sew these two by two all the way around. So that's the last pair. And again, I'm going to press the seam 
just with my hands flat like this. Normally I would finger press, but this is not a straight grain here and it's gonna stretch if I do that and that's going to distort it. So the only place I'm really gonna give it a hard press is right on the end here and I'm just making sure that I don't stretch it as I do it. Now we can sew these two together and then these two together. Since the seam allowances here are going opposite directions, they will nest right here. So this one is going that way, the back one is going the opposite way. So it's pretty easy to get them matched up. See, they're going different ways. And you can just stitch right down here. Here is why I like to use slightly bigger than a quarter inch. It's nice to have enough space here so that when we sew the next thing together we can get everything to match and if this is too close to the edge it's a little bit hard to get everything matched up so it's okay to use slightly larger than a quarter inch just do it on every seam and do it the whole way down the seam not just in the middle now i'm ready to put both halves together i haven't ironed anything yet over at the ironing board i've just pressed it by hand. So again, slightly larger than a quarter inch. And when you get to the center here, I'm going to show you how to match it. Now this seam allowance is going up, the back one is going down, and if you peel it back, you can make sure that that point matches that point. Some people will put a pin in right there. I find I can usually just hold it in place and it will match. Now here is one spot you want to stitch right where these these all intersect, all of these lines. But I would recommend sewing a little bit narrower right there because there's so much bulk in the middle that even if you stitch right on the line, it can be hard to iron it open. So go a teensy hair narrower there. You can always stitch it up deeper easily, but if you get it too deep, you're gonna to have to pick out some stitching to correct it if it's too deep. And I don't like to pick out stitching if I can help it. So let's see how close we were to matching. It, this one is just about perfect. Honestly, this pattern, because it's so scrappy looking, even if you didn't get it perfect, it's probably not going to show. To iron these, I like to keep it in half and just make sure the seam allowances are going the way I want. Then I'm going to just pull it a little bit. Steam just a little bit from both sides. See that one's starting to flip back? I don't want that. Now I'm going to, what I call, peel it back so that this stays nice and flat. And then I'm going to finger press just a little bit on there so every seam allowance stays the way I want it to go. Make sure that center is nice and flat and then steam press the whole thing. They're really really easy, really fun. So I'm going to continue picking up triangles and I'm going to make six of these blocks. Here's all six blocks. They're so much fun to make. Now the only thing we have to do is we have to finish these off so they're square so we can stitch them together. So I have these corner triangles here. These are cut five and a half inches and we are going to put them on every other, every other wedge. So let me show you just one block. So there's one block. That's gonna make it square and we're gonna do that on all six blocks. So these are cut five and a half inches we're just going to stitch them on and then we will square up the blocks when we're done. To stitch this on, line up the edge and make sure you've got about the same amount of excess here as you do here and then use a quarter inch seam. Now your corners may end up being a little too big and that's okay because we're going to trim off any extra after it's stitched on. So don't worry if you open this up 
and this is sticking out a little bit more. Mine's just about right, but if you used quite a bit more than a quarter inch in here, your block will end up smaller and these will be a little too big. Again, it's okay because we're going to cut off the excess. My blocks came out about 14 and a quarter and they're pretty square, but I like to get those dog ears off of there. So I am just going to trim around all four sides. So I think my blocks were intended to come out 14 and a half, but since I used a slightly larger seam allowance, they're a little bit smaller and that's okay. They can really come out any size as long as they're all about the same size. Once the blocks are all trimmed, you want to lay them out and then stand back and see if the colors are balanced. So I tried spinning these different ways. I probably don't want that right up next to that. And the same color is there. So just turn them around, keep turning till you get a nice balanced looking quilt. Now, this is one layout. This is where the blocks are all right up next to each, right up next to themselves. I am going to put a little sashing between them because I would like to frame each block. So I have more of this same fabric that's been used in the corners, and I'm going to put this between all of the blocks. And I think that will just make each block stand out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that sashing between each block this way, and then some long pieces there. And I'm gonna probably put a couple of borders on, and I'm gonna get this quilted so I can see what it looks like. This was a really fun quilt to make. You can really see what looks like circles now. It's an easy quilt to do, even though it looks really hard because nothing has to be matched here. If the centers weren't perfect, it really wouldn't show. Now I've got the sashing between the blocks and I think that highlights each block nicely, but you certainly could put them all together. Now there's a lot of seam allowances in here. So if you did no sashing and you made a big quilt with just blocks, it'd probably be pretty heavy. So you'd wanna do light quilting on it, which is what I did on mine. I just did a swirly pattern. Don't know if you can see it back there, but I used that nice sunflower print on the back. The whole thing just turned out really nice. So the patchwork portion, it was about 32 by 48. And then I added a couple of borders. This is one of those projects that I just could not wait to keep sewing on. I actually got up really early yesterday, didn't wash my hair and just came to the studio because I couldn't wait to finish it. And then I made another color. So take a look at this one. This one is even more fun. So this is my new favorite pattern. If you want to do lighter blocks, this one here has the lighter blocks with the darker outside and that looks really cool too. So each block is about 14 inches so it's a nice big block so you don't need very many to make the whole quilt. Tons of fun. Now if you want to use jelly rolls to make this pattern you'd have to cut them the long way into smaller pieces so cut some one and a half and some one inch and you know so cut those in half almost in half then you'd have to cut some two inches. So just follow the numbers I gave you earlier. You could still make this size quilt with a jelly roll. Thanks for watching our video today on how to make the carousel quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, we're having another giveaway. We're giving away two kits. The first one is called Sand in My Shoes. This is a table runner. And here it is. That's what it looks like when you're all done. So this kit comes with everything you need. Top, patchwork, binding, backing. The second kit we're giving away, this is a sister's choice kit. This is French General Fabrics, and that makes this table runner here. Again, everything you need to make it, except for the batting. So, click the link below that says giveaway. It'll take you to our website. All you have to enter is your name and email address, and this is open to everybody. So, good luck.